Hello everyone, I am DeWeatherDo, welcome back, and today we're going to be giving the latest update for Invest 92L. Could it be Tropical Storm Claudette in the near future? Before we do begin, however, be sure to like and subscribe as it does help my channel grow. And we're just going to get straight into the video. So Invest 92L, potential Tropical Storm Claudette here. And you might be thinking, well, why is it going to be Bill anymore? Well, there is another system now, Invest 93L, which is another video of like a three uh, videos for today. So the other video is Invest 93L. And we have another system, a third one in the tropics as well. So, But this one is Invest 92L. The other one, 93L, is actually developed into Tropical Depression 2. And the National Hurricane Center are going to be issuing advisories on that very shortly, actually, as I'm recording this. So we're going to start out with Invest 92L for today. And as you can see, it's sitting in the Bay of Campeche, however you want to say it. 60% uh, chance of development within the next five days, right? And even 20% chance within the next two days. So showers and storms are getting more organized, still a broad low pressure area. Um, we could see develop over the next couple of days. We could see a tropical depression or storm late in the week as it continues to move northward. But again, because it's a, such a slow mover, as it looks right now, it will be moving pretty slow. So heavy rainfall to areas that it moves near regardless. So um, latest predictions look like it could be tracking north, possibly even a Gulf Coast landfall. So with that said, here is the satellite imagery. You can see thunderstorms are developing for sure. I think this afternoon with the heating of the day, I think more thunderstorms are going to start um, popping up on the satellite imagery. Uh, so, But it is still the, uh, closer to the morning time right now, so we're not seeing as much. But still, thunderstorm activity could be developing uh, later in the day, and it even is right now. And you can see the center of circulation kind of rotating in there. It's not very organized quite yet. Um, it, it really hasn't been over water for that long, but... As I'm going to be showing you uh, coming up right now, the waters are very warm in this region. All right, so look at the Bay of Campeche as a whole. The sea surface temperatures are 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above average, pretty much as is the whole entire western half of the Gulf of Mexico where the storm will be tracking uh, over the next few days. Uh, the actual sea surface temperatures in the southwestern part of the Gulf, I mean, we're seeing sea surface temperatures close in on 29, 30 degrees Celsius. So it's very warm. Like we're talking mid-80s uh, type temperatures, right? So if we look... And the, uh, this is the European's depiction of the sea surface temperatures. You can see 84, pretty much around, right around 84, 85, where the storm is right now in this zone. So very warm waters. Um, I don't think the water temperatures will be the biggest obstacle with developing the system. I'll be talking about that uh, shortly. Uh, 85 off the west coast of Florida. So pretty much, yeah, 84 is what I'm finding. 83, pretty much 83 to 84, the enti its entire trek through the western Gulf of Mexico here, right in the zone as it moves in this direction. So warm water all the way, without a doubt. Water temperature will not be the obstacle with this system. If we look at the dry air, there is very little dry air to be had in the entire Gulf of Mexico. Uh, there is a little bit. Um, there's a little bit in the Western Gulf of Mexico, but if you saw my last video on talking about this system, it was act, there was actually like more dry air than this. And it's, look, and it's very light. So this should really be getting in the way. And this system is taking its time. So this dry air could actually fade out by the time the storm actually starts to move through the uh, Gulf of Mexico as it moves farther north. All right, so let's look now at the shear. Now, this may be a bit of an optical, right? Dry air, really not that much. Uh, sea surface temperatures were warm. Um, plenty of oceanic heat as well. The wind shear, though, might be a bit of an issue. Now, one thing I have that has changed since the last time we talked about this is that the dry air was more, or the, excuse me, the shear was kind of more expansive in the northern Gulf. Now it's sort of sunk south a little bit to where the storm is now. So it's kind of dealing with the wind shear now. That way it doesn't have to deal with it later, if that makes sense. So it is putting up with some slightly higher shear, maybe around 40 or 50 knots, which is still actually pretty strong and hard for a storm to develop. But once it moves through that, look at the northern and central Gulf. Wind shears are blue, which is like 10 or less, 10 knots or less, which is pretty much next to nothing. So once it moves through there, right, the rest of the trek through, whether it makes landfall in Texas, Louisiana, or maybe even farther east than that, uh, wind shear will be lower once it gets, I think once it gets out of the Bay of Campeche, I think the wind shear will start dropping off dramatically. And I think that's where we could see our development chances uh, increase. Now, looking at where the low is currently, the center of circulation, you can see it is over water, just barely, but it is. Um, I feel like if it were to move a bit farther north and get into the deeper waters, I feel like it would have uh, more opportunities to form because it's still kind of closer to the coast right now. But still, nonetheless, the low center is now over water, so that will that will that means that we're going to start seeing development, gradual development of the system. Won't be very fast, 
right, and here are the model guidances. Now, some models are at least these, the batch of these say it's going to move back over land and then move kind of like farther north. I weren't getting much, too much model guidance yet. Again, even if it does make landfall, it might not be another seven days or like five to eight days until it makes landfall if it were to make landfall. So we're still talking about something that's a little bit far out here, but now that we're starting to see it develop, we're starting to see it being recognized more by the uh, National Hurricane Center, right? And you can see some of the models just have it sitting around. A couple do have it starting to shoot north a little bit, right? So that, these are the GEFS model tracks here. Now the GEPS model tracks have some of these systems, uh, have the storm moving farther north, some east, but a few of them start to bring it north. But again, if you look at the time frame on some of these, like look at this, 144 hours, that's like about six days. Right, 144, six days, and 10 days over here. So again, it's still very far out. Even once it leaves the Bay of Campeche and enters the Gulf of Mexico officially, still four days out. So we still got a lot of time with this. Um, and some of the models do have it developing pretty strong, right? Like a couple of these models have it becoming a tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane. But again, as you can see, that's five to seven days down the line. So let's start looking at some models now, starting off here with the GFS model, all right? And as you can see, there is a storm pretty much just sitting there. Like, this is Tuesday afternoon, and it's still sitting in the Bay of Campeche, really not moving too much. And the GFS actually kind of has it sinking back over land, and then maybe other um, other convection starts developing. And then that is what moves north. And you can see some pretty intense energy. you got purples and some kind of like brighter purple colors starting to show up in southeastern Louisiana right there. All right, so that is your landfall pretty much right there, June 18th. On, on so it's friday afternoon we if i looked at gfs yesterday um they had shown a landfall for like the 21st so the speed at which the storm is moving is also a big debate with some of these models you can see even central northern louisiana still a lot of energy and you know what's the worst part and i'll actually uh, show you a map uh, a little later in the video the worst part is that texas louisiana mississippi this region here is so waterlogged already like we're talking about double digits of rainfall above average all right, just to pass for a few months or maybe even for this year uh, so far. So the fact that we're so waterlogged in this region really does not help the situation at all. And here is the GFS model looking at some of the sustained wind speeds potentially at landfall. And as you can see, there's a load just sitting there and it finally makes its way north. Uh, probably some greens on the map, probably a low to mid-level tropical storm. Strength has also been a big debate. So you can see the fact that I said that so many things have been a debate with this system, it's still... Uh, I wouldn't say it's too far out to start looking at the system, but it is still pretty far out. Like even some of the models have been showing maybe two areas of circulation, like breaking off into two different areas, or maybe it's just like, it could be just one big low pressure system all sitting in here. So again, a lot of uncertainty still to go, but tropical storm, uh, GFS has gone for so far with 50 mile an hour winds. That's the, and the wind speed doesn't matter. When you have a storm that moves this slow, wind speed does not matter. I want to stress that even if it was just a tropical depression or an invest, Right, uh, the the wind speed doesn't matter. I mean, it would the wind would make it worse, yes, but the wind does not matter as much as the rainfall. Uh, we're talking about a storm like this. Look at the look at the landfall. So GFS had a landfall Friday night, and the low still pretty much meandering, and it's still sitting over northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, even through early like early wee hours of Monday. So it could be there the entire weekend, and even if it was only sitting there for like only a day. Still, the rainfall, like I'm going to show you a couple maps later here. You're going to see the rainfall and how much the this, this southeast is just waterlogged. All right, so let's look at the Canadian model now. All right, now there is a lot of energy, yes, and it's also a little bit kind of strung out and not very organized. So the wind shear might actually, like the energy is still there, but the wind shear might help to maybe, maybe knock off some of that energy a little bit, keep it strung out. But still, look at the purples that are moving through Mississippi, Alabama. All right, and this still definitely looks like tropical storm material. To say the least and and look the canadian even has the past couple model runs they have it like zigzagging to the east and developing right where kind of like uh invest 93l is sitting right now so pretty much developing off the carolina coast maybe once again like it could die and come back so that's one thing they're, they're uh pointing out as well so let's look at the wind speeds with the canadian model very interesting uh with the wind speeds here as well so let's go north and you can see you can see a little bit of green. You can saw a little bit of green pop up right in Louisiana. So definitely a tropical storm, all right? But again, the energy is strung out. So even if it doesn't become a tropical storm, which I personally, I do think it will become a tropical storm, the Canadian just has it redeveloping pretty much with 1,003 is pretty low pressure off of the shore here and then moving north.
and then out to sea. So pretty much taking Invest 93L's exact track if I were to do that. All right. Now let's look at the waterlogged southeast. Right. So here is Texas and Louisiana. All right. So Houston is right here. Lake Charles is right here. New Orleans is right here, and Baton Rouge as well. You can see anywhere in this purple region, that's where we're five to eight inches of rain above average, or five to eight inches of precipitation, we'll say, above average in just the past 30 days. And in the magenta, which pretty much also covers everybody, Houston and Victoria, Baton Rouge, Lake Charles, Lafayette included, and Beaumont, you guys are all eight plus inches above average in just the past 30 days, right? So we're probably like eight, 10, 12, that's at least eight. So 10, 12, uh, certainly is what we are above average. And that is, that's a water, that's awfully waterlogged. All right, so we don't need any more rain, let alone another tropical entity. All right, so here's a European model's uh, depiction of it. You can see here it is. This is pretty much like Friday night. GFS Friday night kind of had it right here. So European, maybe a little bit slower um, with the with the movement there. And then coming on shore here looks like on Saturday night as opposed to Friday night. Um, you can still see a little center right there. There's your like little low center. Um, now more of Texas, I'd say, would be included in that. But this could also be an eastern loaded system where even though it makes landfall, it could make landfall in Texas, let's say, and all the precipitation might be in Louisiana. All right, so let's look at the wind speeds, and you can see some of the greens and the yellows, um, maybe potentially over 50 mile an hour, 55 mile an hour winds could be coming in. And you can notice where all that wind energy is. Louisiana and Mississippi, even though the landfall, they had it like near Beaumont. All right, so again, it could be eastern side loaded. That could depend on the wind shear as well. And just looking at the development chances here, uh, according to the NCEP ensembles, they have a 90 to 100 percent plus chance. OK, that's a pretty high development chance. And then their like, cone of uncertainty will kind of paint out for you right here. Kind of like takes it in this direction towards Texas, Louisiana, and then maybe curving east as a lot of storms do this time of year. That's definitely not abnormal. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I will also have videos out about Invest 93L and another tropical storm potentially um, developing off the coast of Africa in that MDR region. So thank you guys for watching. I am The Weather Dude signing off till next time. Catch you guys next video.